That's a good question. I think um, we are going through it. I think there's a massive shakedown at the moment, certainly in that kind of mid-range. We, um, the, the, the loss of Jamie's Italian for whatever reason, the mm. restaurants at that level. I think there was a point they there was suddenly a, an interest in food culture in the UK, which we maybe hadn't had properly for a long, long time. We've always been good at ingredients. We've always been good at a certain level. But then that realisation that we could be an interest, London could be an interesting food city, but the same thing is now being repeated. Manchester and Bristol and yeah. Liverpool and Glasgow. Glasgow's yeah. got an amazing restaurant scene at the moment. And he's seeing it's kind of finally spread across the UK. And I think there's a lot of things that expanded very rapidly without necessarily getting the infrastructure in place. Right. Um, knowing that... Um, and I know of a, of a couple of restaurant groups that say, well, this year we've opened this one and it's doing brilliantly. Therefore, we should open another eight. And then realize they've opened another eight and all they've done is spread the number of people that were going to that restaurant across eight sites and up to their overheads. Um, I think the rent and rates thing at the moment, that's going to need a, a lot of adjustment. Um, and I've arrested, I walked past their place the other day and it sadly closed after 50 plus years. But they'd been hit with a, I think it was a 60% rate increase. Wow. I yeah, said, I yeah, mean, we that, can't. That, that makes it tough. Yeah. And, it's a tough industry yeah. as it is without. And yeah, footfall seems and, to be down, um, costs are up. Yeah. So well, and it's hard to get good stuff as well. Yeah. It's not just that, but, you know, restaurants now, uh, and especially kind of, uh, well, not so much mid-range, but I'm talking kind of especially in the kind of uh, high-end fine dining. It's mm -hmm. becoming increasingly difficult to get people who uh, want to work those hours, want to work under sure. those conditions, and will do that. And I've uh, kind of, from speaking to people, realized that it's become the whole notion of kind of four days on, three days off has become a lot more popular, whether you, um, you know, you still work the hours and you still do that, but, it, you know. Concentrate, yeah. And um, it's interesting to see that because you're right, definitely in the, you know, uh, kind of high street chains, even the kind of Jamie's places and all that, definitely, a, you know, a lot of kind of um, issues there. But I was surprised to see the amount of as well, kind of uh, like Gordon Ramsay's uh, Maze. They closed that down and opened mm -hmm. Lucky Cat now. And I think Maze, I don't want to say how much I think that they had lost, but it was a number that I just kind of gawped at to see how much they'd right. lost in one year. And then um, in Chiswick, um, uh, Hedon. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, seeing that close down, mm -hmm. and that was like, I think, you know, a great place with great reviews. I think, you know, um, had a Michelin yeah. star, and it's really crazy to think that even if you have a restaurant with a Michelin star, you have great reviews, you've got great kind of product and, and uh uh, experience there that even that's not necessarily enough mm -hmm. uh, these days to secure your your business. Yeah, I think no, it's it's uh, it's interesting to see. I think there is a um, it will be interesting with the I don't know the, the the more we tank sterling, the more appealing we become to tourists, which is possibly one saving grace. But whether you can persuade them to do the food tourism thing, 